Now that you've seen all the pieces, it's time to predict relative melting or boiling points based on intermolecular forces. As a reminder, intermolecular forces result because there is an unbalanced charge in the molecule or dipole. That dipole may be temporary, which we call dispersion forces. All molecules have dispersion forces, whether they are polar or nonpolar. Dispersion forces, however, are very weak attractions between molecules. More important are the permanent dipole forces, such as dipole forces, dipolar forces, or dipole-dipole forces. These belong to polar molecules and are stronger than dispersion forces. And finally, hydrogen bonding, which is a particularly strong type of dipole force. This is the strongest interaction for molecules. Remember, molecules are made of nonmetals. One can use intermolecular forces to predict relative boiling and melting points. For example, we have two structures here. Which molecular substance has the higher boiling point? Well, we can see that both are molecules. So on the left side, we have dispersion forces, and also on the right side. To decide if the molecule is polar, let's pay attention to the boxed regions on both molecules. Carbon-hydrogen bonds are not particularly polar. However, if I draw out the area in the box to show the oxygen with the lone pairs and the bond angle of 109 degrees, and finally, the bond dipole arrows in red, I trust you can see that this region is going to be polar. The bond dipoles add up to a net dipole in this region of the molecule. Therefore, both these molecules have permanent dipole forces. The last thing we want to consider is hydrogen bonding. Again, the region in the boxes is interesting in terms of hydrogen bonding. I trust you can see that for each of these molecules, because they have this carbon-oxygen-hydrogen arrangement, if they were to encounter a like molecule, we have a hydrogen bonded to oxygen, so it's very partially positive, and we have a lone pair on the oxygen of another molecule, so hydrogen bonding can occur. So how do we decide, since each of these molecules has the same type of glue, which one has the higher boiling point? Well, we should remember something about dispersion forces. The larger the molecule, the larger the dispersion forces. So the molecule on the left has greater dispersion forces and therefore has the higher boiling point. Here's another example for you of predicting relative boiling and melting points. We are comparing a chlorine molecule, a molecule composed of chlorine and bromine, and a molecule composed of chlorine and iodine. The chlorine molecule is nonpolar, so that only has dispersion forces. The chlorine and bromine will have slightly different electronegativities with slight bond dipoles, so there will be a little bit of an attraction between molecules. Chlorine and iodine have a larger electronegativity difference, so there will be a greater attraction between molecules. So chlorine has a melting point of minus 100 degrees Celsius. That means it transitions from solid to liquid very easily and at a low temperature because there's very little interaction between chlorine molecules. However, as we increase the polarity, the intermolecular forces increase. The chlorine bromine molecule has a higher melting point of minus 66 degrees Celsius. And the chlorine iodine molecule has a melting point of 27 degrees Celsius. So you can see that as polarity increases, melting point also increases. Of course, there's also an increase because iodine is heavier than bromine and we are going up in molecular mass, but polarity increase also contributes to these differences. Please remember, the greater the intermolecular forces between molecules, the higher the melting or boiling point.
So here is your student question. Does carbon tetrachloride or carbon with two fluorines and bromines have a higher boiling point and why? So it's important to recognize the three-dimensional nature of these molecules. So list the forces underneath them, deciding if they have dispersion, dipolar, and H-bonding forces. Here is a question that has nothing to do with molecules. Aluminium is a metal and sodium is a metal. So we are dealing with the other major class of materials known as ionic compounds. And I'd like to know which of these materials has the higher melting point and why. This question is to remind students to think about charge interactions as why molecules and ions cling to one another. So students should be evaluating the interaction between a minus 3 and a plus 3 or a minus 1 and a plus 1 to make this decision. This question asks which of the two compounds shown has a higher boiling point and why. Once again, it helps to actually think about the Lewis structures and the molecular shape. The first molecule is ethanol, so I've drawn it out for you. The second molecule is dimethyl ether, also drawn here. So please look at each molecule and evaluate what intermolecular forces are present. You'll choose the one with higher intermolecular forces to choose the one that has a higher boiling point. 